Okay, so you guys have been working with fractions, multiplying them like crazy. We're going to make sure you've got a few fractions completely down. For example, 2 thirds times 7 eighths. When you times these two, we did multiplication straight across. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 8, 24. And you're like, aha, does that thing simplify at all? got 14 over 24. There's something that goes into both of those. A 2. You divide by 2, divide by 2, and this goes down to 7 twelfths. Let's make sure we've got one more. 4 fifths times 10 thirty-sixths. Let's go ahead and multiply them, and we did 4 times 10 is 40. 5 times 36. Ooh, yuck. 5 times 36. Just a minute. 36 times 5. Got 30, 0, 3, 15, 18, 180. 40 over 180. Now we start looking to simplify and we're like, 40 over 180. Ah, there's a nice one that goes into 40 and 180. Got a 10. See these zeros over there. Divide by 10 on both of them. We have 4 over 18. 2 goes into both of those, we get 2 ninths. Whew. A lot of simplification going on there. Now, as you recall, I introduced a kind of a secret little way of simplifying last time. We broke them apart in uh, prime factorization, kind of split open the number to see what its guts are, to see what it's made of. This actually helps us a great deal with these type of problems. I want you to notice. 8 is 2 times 4. Got those right there. Now, 2 times 4, if we take and do this, all we're doing is taking 2 times 7 and 3 times that. Notice that these 2's can cancel before we actually multiply. Then all we have up here is 1 times 7 is 7, and 3 times 4 is 12. We can simplify ahead of time. Look at how valuable it is on a problem that, where we get some really big numbers. Here, this is, well, that's 2 times 5. And we have multiplying straight across. These 5's can just cancel. This one, is there anything in 36 that will go away with one of those, with that 4? Like, ooh, I bet there is. This is 4 times 9. The 4's cancel. So now we have... 2 ninths. We didn't even have to do a multiplication. The idea of being able to cancel ahead of time is really valuable with fractions. Let me show you on a really big one. If I have 2 thirds times 3 fifths times 5 sevenths times 7 elevenths equals, this could get really, really messy. 2 times 3 is 6, times 5 is 30, times 7 is like 210. And then on the bottom we're going to have like 3 times 5 is 15, times 7 is like 105, times 11 is really large. Yeah, like 1,155, something like that, I don't know. So, we could do that and then see if we could simplify. However, look at this, if we're going to be timesing it, 210 is going to be 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, right up here. 3 times 5 times 7 times 11. And notice, the 3's cancel, the 5's cancel, the 7's cancel, and we're ended up with 2 11's. Becomes very convenient. One of the very best things we can do with this is be able to change and do unit conversions. We use fractions all the time when we do units. Very common one around this part is people will go, you know, um, 30 miles per hour on a bicycle. So we write this, 30 miles per hour. And you say you're traveling for two hours. So you travel for, and we times by two hours. Now if you notice what happens here, based on what we just did, we're timesing, the hours actually cancel and you end up with 60 miles. Let me do another one to kind of show you how that works. 
Okay, so in my vehicle, I do 30 miles, and it takes two gallons to go 30 miles. If I reduce that, that says I have 15 miles per gallon. That's gas mileage. We go 15 miles per gallon. Now, what's been interesting for me is to find out exactly how much money it costs me per mile, or how many miles can I go per dollar. So, if we were to have gasoline or petrol or whatever you call it, diesel, whatever you put in your car, and it cost, say, um, $3 per gallon. In fact, let me write it like this so you can kind of see. $3 per gallon. We can actually do this to change it into miles per dollar, and I'll show you how. If we times this by the fraction, we have one gallon for three dollars. Look at what happens with this. We can cancel it just like we did here, and we have 15 divided by three gives us five. I end up with five miles per dollar. That means I can drive five miles with one dollar. And it gives me a good idea of exactly how much my transportation is costing me. The other really good thing with this, with the unit conversions, is if you're ever exchanging money, you're able to do it quite nicely. Okay, the other thing that you can do with the unit conversions that's really very handy is that you can exchange money, currencies, such as um, if you have euros. So I have five euros. You say, okay, how many dollars is that? Well, it says here, I've got a little note here that says, right now it's around $1.30 per euro. So we have $1.3 per euro. Now, if we times these two together, look at what happens. Euros cancel, and I have 5 times 1.3, $6.5. So I'm going to write up here what I have, that a euro is $1.3. Interesting, a Mexican peso is around 8 cents, somewhere in the middle of 2010, that's where it sits, and a British pound was about $1.50 a piece. Now, this gets to be kind of a fun game. If you say, okay, I have, let's get an estimation here, just a number to work with. Let's say we had five pesos. We said, let's see if we can find out how many English pounds we have. Well, five pesos, it says there is eight cents, point zero eight dollars per peso. And we have, we're going to times here, with, we need to change into pounds. So it says that one pound is one point five dollars. Now, here we have the pesos cancel just like in the, in the fractions. And the dollars now cancel, and look at what we've done. Since the dollars canceled and the pesos canceled, we have five times 0 .08, so that's 0 .40, and that's 0 .40 pounds over 1.5, and dollar is gone. So now we have 0 .40 divided by 1.5. You can do this Divide by 1.5, move your decimal one place, and you get 15 into 4.0. So 15 goes into 4, nope. 15 goes into 40, twice, that gives us 30, subtract, and we drop down the 0. 15 goes into 100, I believe it's 6 times, and we get 90, 
and we get one zero. I think that's going to keep going for a while. We have 0.26, so that means five pesos is going to give you just over one quarter of a British pound. And you're able to exchange with these currencies as long as you have these exchange rates and match them up so that when you have them in one, like dollars here, can cancel with the other one. That allows you to do unit conversions with uh, feet, ounces, inches, miles per hour, miles per gallon, cents per ounce. You're able to do a whole bunch of applications with it. So now let's have some practice. To the boards! Hello and welcome back to the boards. It's time for you to practice some conversion problems. We have three conversion problems here in blue for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video and make sure to follow these four steps when doing a conversion problem. First of all, write out your given value as a fraction. So you'll always start with something, write what you start with as a fraction. Then identify your desired result. What, what do you want to find? Make sure you know about what you're looking for. After that, you're going to use the conversions found in section 1.4 of your book to set those up as fractions to cancel out the units. Lastly, multiply all the fractions together. Use these four steps to solve these problems. You can pause it now, and when you're ready to check, we'll work on it together. Okay, let's give it a try. So we're working on problem number one. A bag of rice costs $2.50 for three pounds. How much does it cost per ounce? So step number one says we need to write out the given value as a fraction. It costs $2.50 for three pounds. Okay, great. Now we need to identify our desired result. We're looking for cost per ounce. So we want dollars on top and ounces on bottom. That's what we're looking for here. So we need, we already have dollars on top, you'll see that, but we don't want pounds on bottom, we want ounces. So we're going to need to go to section 1.4 in the book and find a conversion to use. It's going to need to get rid of pounds. We want to get rid of pounds. Uh, so if I want to get rid of pounds, I want pounds to be on top because then the pounds would cancel and I'd want ounces on bottom. That would give me dollars on top, ounces on bottom, and the pounds would cancel out. So let's find that conversion in section 1.4. Here we learn that one pound is 16 ounces. Again, that's the conversion that they give you in section 1.4. Excellent. Now, again, we'll be able to cancel out the pounds. Pounds will cancel, and we'll be left with dollars on top and ounces on bottom, which is exactly what we're looking for. So our last step now will be to multiply the fractions. 2.5 times 1, well that's 2.5, and 16 times 3, well that's 48. So we're left with, we're left with 2.5 divided by 48. We can go ahead and do that division, and when we did, when we divide that out by hand, we get that the cost is about 0 0.05 dollars per ounce. And that's our answer. Okay, great. Let's try it again here with number two. Again, we're going to work on the four steps. Step number one. Write out the given value as a fraction. Let's see what they gave us. A car can travel 310 miles on 10 gallons of gas. The first sentence is almost always going to be the given value. I'm going to write it out. 320 miles. And we did it in 10 gallons. Okay, nice. Let's identify the desired result. Let's keep reading. If gas costs $2.80 per gallon, how many miles can a car drive per dollar? Ooh. So we are looking for, our goal is to get miles on top and drive per dollar. Now the word per means division. So miles per dollar. I need to get dollars on bottom and miles on top. So notice I already have miles on top. That's great news, but I need to get rid of gallons. My goal will be to get gallons on top we will, so that the gallons cancel out and dollars on bottom. Now they gave us this conversion. We don't need to go to section 1.4 to do this one because they actually told us that it costs 
and 80 cents per gallon. So 2.8 is the cost for one gallon. Now notice our gallons are going to cancel out and we'll be left with miles on top and dollars on bottom. Let's multiply across. 320 times 1 is 320 on top and on bottom we get 10 times 2.8 which comes out to be 28. We can go ahead and set this up as a division problem. We can put 320 into the box and divide it by 28. I'm not going to work that out to save some space, but when you do do that, you get 11.42 as our answer. And so we would say the answer is 11.42 miles per dollar. Excellent. Let's go to the last one. Last one's a little tricky because it's going to involve one additional conversion that we're going to have to use. I think we can do it, though. Let's give it a shot. How many pesos are equal to 40 euros? Okay, so we start off with 40 euros, and our goal is to get to pesos. So we want to have pesos on top. Now, if we go to section... 1.4, uh, we find out that euros, one euro is a dollar 30. Now, I want to get rid of euros, so I'm going to times this. I'm going to put euro on bottom so that the euro cancels out, and I'd be left with dollar on top. One euro is a dollar 30. So notice the euros would cancel out, and I'd be left with dollars. But we don't want to end up with dollars, we want to end up with pesos. So I'm going to have to put dollars on the bottom and pesos on top so that I, the dollars cancel out. Now, in section 1.4, you'll find that conversion as well. Uh, it says that one Mexican peso is $0.08. So again, the euro would cancel out, the dollar would cancel out, and we'd just be left with, euro, with pesos on top. So now we just need to multiply all the top, all the fractions together. So I'm going to multiply the tops. 40 times 130 on top and 1 times 0 0.08 on bottom. When I do that, I get 52. And on bottom, I get 0 0.08. So we go ahead and divide those. And uh, again, you would put 52 in the box and 0 0.08 outside. I would move the decimal place over two spots on both of these so that I have 8 divided by 5200. And when you do that, you get the final answer of 650 when you work that out, 650 pesos. And that's it. That's how you work on conversions using those four procedures. Keep working hard.